Hello guys, Martin here coming to you with my inbox review for the Ravel Arado AR196A-3 seaplane 130 second scale, kit number 04688 This is going to be my next build which will be entered into the Mad Modeler's Go Big or Go Home group build and also Jermaine Oskin, that's 8 foot Iceman um, is group build on the International Scale Modelers Forum that's called uh, Big Bird Buddy Build. So it's going into two um, group builds. Anyway, I bought this kit. You can see the price on there. The retail price was thirty-seven seventy-five from Obby Town, USA. But I, at the time I bought it, I had a seven fifty coupon, so it only cost me thirty dollars and twenty-five cents about 20 pounds in the UK so let's open her up and let's see what she got well let's have a look at the artwork on the box um, nice artwork um, a couple in flight there and on the back the usual Ravel stuff skill levels this is a skill level 5 which is the highest skill level um, being the most difficult with over usually part over 150 parts requiring a high level of skill. On this side of the box we have some nice images showing the plane built up and some of the details that come within this kit and uh, just one moment there's glare from the window. I'm going to adjust that. Let's see how that looks. That's better. So um, yeah, some nice images. Looks like it's got some nice detail. And then here we have the paint guide. Um, and then on this side, we have some history on it in um, four languages. German, English, French and Dutch. So let's open her up. Let's see what we've got inside. It's an end opener, as usual with the new um, Ravel boxes. Comes with a lot of plastic. A couple of leaflets I won't look at. I'm only interested in what we're going to be building. So, plastic wise, we have one bag containing the clear sprues. And we have one, two, three, four, Five bags, separate bags containing light grey sprues. Now let's count the sprues. <clears throat> in this bag, there's two sprues. Two sprues in there, so that's four. Two sprues in that one, that's six sprues. One, two, three in there. So that's nine sprues. And then in the last bag, there's one, two, three, four sprues in there. So a total of 13 light grey sprues and one clear sprue. A lot of plastic for $30. Um, and then we have the instruction booklet which is in black and white. <coughs> we go to the back pages. It's um, showing the options for two um, group markings and uh, it has 58 stages of um, assembly where the decals are over there yeah. here we have a sheet of decals let's have a look at these I've never had problems with 
Ravel decals. I actually like them a lot, like the Airfix decals. Printed in 2012 by Ravel, which is the same date on the box. So this model is a 2010 new tooling. The uh, decals are a sort of satin finish and they're very thin. Look very good and I can't see any carrier film on the edges. Just in the corners there's like a radius so I guess that makes it easier for um, printing to have that radius. But everything else uh, I can't, cannot see any carrier film. It's like the decals are right to the edge. Doesn't come with any um, swastikas, so you're going to have to use aftermarket decals for tailplane swastikas for the vertical stabilizer. Um, so they look great, and uh, with all the Revel kits I've done, I've never had issues with Revel decals. Let's have a quick look at the instruction booklet. Again, it comes with some history here in German first and then English. This is a Revell Germany kit so we know it's going to be good. They're usually a lot better than the Revell USA kits. Um, <clears throat> just the usual um, symbols and descriptions on what those symbols mean that you're going to find within the assembler. Uh, all the paints that we're going to use. Paints are Alph alphabetically itemized from A through to T and uh, A is a mixture of two paints Schwarzgrün and Dunkelgrün but that's how they list them and here it sh this page shows all the sprues um, that we have in there 13 light grey and one clear And as usual, we start with the cockpit. From what I'm seeing, it's really nicely detailed. Um, I know there's some rigging has to go on this. A bit of rigging. It doesn't come with any uh, rigging. So I'll oh, use some easy line for whatever I have to do the rigging. But I'm not going to go through this because there's 57 stages and we'll be here all day doing that. I just want this to be a quick review but I will look at the plastic in detail but I'll just quickly skip through it as you can see nice framework looks like there's a lot of detail in that cockpit uh, which is great I like nicely detailed kits you can get aftermarket stuff uh, photo etch for the um, instrument panels you can get resin seats for the gunner seat and the pilot seat and you get photo etch for the uh, for the machine guns that come with this kit so yeah I'm not gonna bother going through that guys it's a lot to go through and I don't want to bore you guys but as usual, it's two squadron markings. Um, first one is Arado uh, AR196A3 of 3 KG100 at Kalamaki Creek, January 1943. And uh, the second option is for the Board Flieger Gruppe 196 on board of German battleship Tirpitz summer of 1943 these were the primary um, planes that we used on all ships from 1938 onwards I believe in um, in the German Navy and uh, <coughs> I'm not sure which squadron markings I'm going to do I'll decide when I get around to building it Let's have a look at the plastic because it's the plastic that we're building and what we're interested in, how nice it looks. 
whether it's crisp and clean, free of sink marks, free of ejection marks on seen surfaces, no warping, etc. etc. So I'm going to the first bag that has the most screws in. And uh, bags are sealed with sellotape. In this bag we have the four sprues in, containing the wings. We have the upper wing sections on this sprue. It looks like horizontal stabilizer, upper section. So these are the upper sections for the rear horizontal stabilizers and the main wings. We have nice recessed power lines, very clean mouldings. Um, I'm not seeing any flash. I'm not seeing any stress marks or visible um, blemishes on the outside surfaces, which is nice. Uh, shut off features on these areas look clean, free of flash. Uh, it's got the Revell marking in here 2010 Revell GmbH and Company KG. Uh, so it's only a five year old kit now. So that looks good. Lower wings, I'm guessing recesses for struts for supporting the underwing um, floats. And again, lovely detail on here. Nice recessed panel lines. Very crisp parts, very nice. And that's the lower rear stabilizer. And again, that's, that looks really good, guys. Looks like a nice kit. Here we go for the starboard fuselage off. It's got nice um, ribbon detail in here, skin detail, if you can see that. It's got some nice details in here where, because you can have the option to have the wings folded back on this or closed. You can have one folded back, uh, one closed, have them both folded back, have them both closed. But again, these mouldings look really crisp. Some rivet details around the end there, where the uh, skins come under the metalwork on the end there. Um, these look like flaps for the main wings, upper and lower, I guess. And. Uh, this part here, I'm not sure what that is. Probably part of the stand or part of the folding mechanisms. I can't tell right off. But I'm not seeing any flash, I'm not seeing any warp, no blemishes. It looks beautiful. Let's go on to the next one. This is the port side. Again, nice detail there inside that wing frame rivet details around the uh, front area and then again we've got the nice skin going over the uh, internal struts and braces looks really nice so that's the first four go to the next screw this bag has uh, two sprues in it. One is obviously the base that we sit this on, whether I use that or whether I put it on my own base, which I've never done before. I'm guessing this might be something to do with uh, either the part of the base structure, but it's got kind of a shape for a... no, it's not the cockpit. That's the cockpit floor on that one. Um, but again, mouldings are really clean, really nicely done. No flash whatsoever. Cockpit floor. It's got some nice surface detail, some texture there. Everywhere else looks smooth, but here it's got some EDM texture. Um, don't know whether that's been done by Mold Tech. Um, which is a company that does textures for the moulding industries and they have uh, hundreds of different textures that they can photo etch when they uh, 
apply textures to injection molded parts or they just done it with their EDM settings you can do certain textures using your EDM settings on on your um, EDM machines but that looks very crisp very nice and this is the framework around the cockpit and inside there we've got consoles um, which look great I love in all this detail oops excuse me lads bad timing for someone to call me uh, this looks like a under, under the cockpit area the sub uh, fuselage area so the port side and starboard sides will connect to that and then the wings will come from here this is the rudder for the vertical stabilizer and everything looks crisp and clean so let's move on to the next part so we're going to open the third bag now and tape down really well this bag has a couple of sprues in a smaller sprue and a longer sprue this has the floats and uh, we have two halves of a float there and again very nice recessed panel lines very crisp mouldings these are really nice but German engineering is as we know in the engineering industry is very very good uh, paddles here that come off the back of the floats and uh, parts of those paddles I'm guessing some of the mechanisms but really really crisp parts guys I'm really looking forward to handling this stuff and painting it looks beautiful um, here we have engine cowling part of the engine cowling and two halves of a bomb and I'm guessing these are some of the parts that go within the engine uh, within the um, cockpit area but again I'm not seeing any flash at all these are actually actually beautiful crisp parts I'm really impressed so that bag of two sprues looks great let's move on to the next bag of two sprues which is a similar bag to the one we just looked at with another two halves of floats yeah, it's identical to the these are identical to the last two parts we've just seen so what I'm going to do is look for flash and uh, any warp, any visible problems. And again, I'm seeing zero issues with that sprue. So let's move on to the smaller sprue with the engine cowling and bomb halves. And again, guys, this is just seriously, it's beautiful engineering. It's what we expect from the reputation that the German engineers have within the industry. So I'm going to move on to the last bag of grey sprues before I look at the clear sprues. And in this last bag we have one, two, three grey sprues. Um, first sprue looks like it's the um, top of the floats let me just check for my drawing yeah it's the top of the floats and these are the features where the struts locate into and again if you can see that detail how crisp that is and how clean these parts are it's beautiful engineering beautiful mouldings and on the uh, spinner around the shutout features where the prop comes through there is zero flash 
This is really good stuff. Very, very clean. And all these small parts. And the propeller edges. You've got compound surfaces that you have to shut off from one off to the other. And you'd expect a little bit of flash in some areas around that propeller. Because that's um, all compound surfaces shutting off on each other. But there is z literally zero flash around the edges of that propeller. That is excellent engineering. And here are the struts. All the strut, strut uh, parts that we're going to be using for support in the floats and the plane. And I'm going to move on to the next row, guys. That is, this is incredible um, molding work. I'm really impressed with this stuff. All right, so here we are. We've got the bottom of the flaps here. We saw the uppers. Uh, no, here are the uppers. Sorry. So we've got upper and lower flap sections. We've got another style of propeller. So there's obviously two styles of propeller. What I am noticing though on this propeller is we do have sink in the thickest area, thickest section, and that's quite deep. The sink there, look, on that one, and then sink there, which is at it, and there's partial sink on that blade. But they're thick sections, and um, if they try to, it's a balance of trying to pack out those thick sections, you're going to start uh, blowing the parting areas around the smaller sections and getting flash around those. This has all the engine, radial engine details, more cowling uh, mouldings. Um, part of the interior and interior wall. I'm guessing that's front of the engine. But the, all these parts, apart from the sink and the propeller, again, look really, really nice. And I'm going to forgive them the, for the propeller because I've been in the moulding industry all my life and I can understand how thick that section is there, why that's occurring. The only way they could have done, got rid of that, is if they used a blowing agent to pack that out. But blowing agents are going to leave a marbling effect on the mouldings. So again, I'm really, really pleased with these mouldings, guys. These parts look great. And this engine comes really nicely detailed. As you can see, all these parts are very, very detailed. You see all the cylinder heads and the um, pipe work. Very nicely detailed, and again, there's zero flash. It's incredible for all this detail and the forms and the surfaces that are being shut off on. I'm really impressed. Internal bracing on the wings, uh, instrument panel with lots of raised details, more instrumentation. front of the engine where the spindle comes through for the propeller it's like back part of a seat or a base part of a seat it's got some straps on there raised detail indicating um, the pilot's seat belts well, just gorgeous detail and I'm not seeing sync on any of these parts but I'm really impressed guys seriously so that's the last of the grey screws. So I'm going to move on to the clear sprues now. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's see what we have in there. These are lovely, thin, nice, thin mouldings. 
crystal clear. I don't know whether you can see that. These are beautiful, clear, moulded parts. No knit lines on any of the visual areas. No blemishes, no voids from air traps. And there's no um, no blushing from gates. But yeah, no flash as well. These parts look, I gotta say, I wanna use the word gorgeous. These are really well engineered and molded parts, apart from the thick, two th thick sections on three of the uh, blades of the propeller, one of the propellers. And I'm not going to grumble by that because I understand it. And uh, just a little couple of spots of filler, and it's Bob's your uncle, it's sorted. So, anyway, that's it, guys. Um, I'm looking forward to building this. Um, so I'm going to move on now, let you guys go. This has been a 25 minute review so far and uh, I don't want it going any longer because I know you'll just skip through it and it can get boring watching long detailed reviews. All you need to know guys as model makers out there, these mouldings are really crisp, they look sharp, they look beautiful, zero flash, zero warp. Just a couple of bits of sync on that one propeller. Clear parts are clear, gorgeous looking. Looks like it's going to be a great build. And you can get aftermarket PE and resin parts for this kit. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Enjoy your model making. Keep up the great work. I'm looking forward to uh, putting this together. And I hope you follow this build. So I'm going to leave here. I'm going to get these parts washed. And prepare them to make a start uh, Monday, Tuesday of next week. It's now Saturday afternoon and it's um, what time is it? It's now 5.50 in the evening Saturday, March the 14th um, That's it guys, thanks for watching Tally-o, chocks away
the 